Hi there, I'm Will Tell, and today we're going to be doing a review on the Para Ordnance GI Expert. So first things first, let's make sure this guy's clear. Alright, you can see right there, nothing in that chamber, nothing in that magwell. So we're clear and ready to move on. So the first thing that I want to cover are the controls. They are of the non-extended, non-ambidextrous variety. They are the way that they were designed to be. So you can see here, that uh, Para did a pretty good job of rounding these off. They're nice and comfortable, no problems there. And brush and whatever is not gonna catch that and turn that safety off, because that safety may be the only thing between you and a 45 caliber slug. I don't like anything moving my safeties other than my, figure, my fingers, okay? So next up we got the hammer. The hammer is uh, skeletonized, and it's got this ribbing on the back. Para says that the skeletonization will help the slide push that back. I don't necessarily buy it. I don't think that a 45 caliber charge is going to have any trouble moving that thing back, whether it's galvanized or not. I don't know. It might help cut back on wear, but I'm not too concerned about it. Then we've got the trigger. Uh, the trigger here is a little bit unusual for a 1911. It is a polymer skeletonized trigger, and you really don't see polymer on these 1911s very often. I'm, the, I'm sure a lot of guys absolutely hate that. It really doesn't bother me. As far as I'm concerned, it functions just fine, and it's got no creep, and release is nice. I'm just going to check this one more time. We are clear, pointed in a safe direction, and here's my trigger squeeze. All right, no creep on that. You can see it is nice and quick. Not a lot of over travel either, so that means that target acquisition is going to be nice and quick. Next up, we're going to talk about the grip safety, which is actually my favorite thing on this pistol. I love this grip safety. I absolutely love it. You can see here that it's only about as wide as the trigger. It's not like the ones that you get on those Kimbers that are coming out to here, so to speak, you know, that are half an inch thick and sticking way down your hand or any of that nonsense. It's nice and small. It's functional. And, uh, you know, it's not getting in your way. You can see it is going to protect me from that hammer bite. I don't have to worry about getting hurt while I'm shooting the darn thing. And it's not too flashy. I really don't like flashy on 1911s. I think that they're meant to have this kind of clean, chic look, and I really don't want anything beyond that. Uh, to the same tune, we come to the grips. The grips on this are standard diamond, shape, uh, standard diamond and uh, they got the Pear Ordnance logo in there. Beyond that, not a lot to them. They're basic little polymer grips and they're there for you to put your hand on and not really flashy, not doing a whole lot. They don't take away from the look of the gun, they don't draw attention. And you know, I really like that about these grips. Alright, as you can see, pair up, cut out this little notch right there. And what that actually is doing is as the front side of your cartridge case comes out, or even better, when you have a non-fired loaded case come out, that little notch is just clearance so you don't ding up the front or damage the front of your projectile because if you put it back in and it's chipped, that's going to affect your ballistics. So that little guy right there is going to protect those when they're coming out. Also it's got this beveled edge right here, cut out at, I don't know, maybe about a 45 degree angle. And that also is going to help you clear without having any kind of problems during ejection with them trying to hang up right there. But I actually did not know this until after I bought it and was flipping through the manual, the slide and the receiver are both stainless. I knew it came with a match grade stainless steel barrel, which is nice, but then I found out, like I said, that the slide and the frame are stainless, and also I was able to do some figuring, and I know that all of the controls are stainless, the grip safety is stainless, the hammer is stainless, the disconnector is stainless, the sear is stainless, the whole bloody thing's made of stainless steel, so I don't have to worry about this corroding on me. You know, I really don't have to worry about this gun. If I pick it up out of a box and pull the trigger, it goes bang. It's that simple. Next up are the sights, which are dovetailed into the slide, which was, you know, pretty standard configuration, and they are that standard three dot. So you can see there, sight picture is pretty standard for a 1911. So these are, like I said, dovetailed in. Uh, the front one was a little bit loose. It actually, well, actually a lot loose. It fell out. Uh, during about my first 250 rounds and I very nearly threw it into a garbage can not realizing it was on top of one of the targets that I already shot. So uh, luckily a friend of mine was able to w noticed it before I left the range. So I, I took that and put a little bit of super glue on it and I let the super glue set and then pressed it back into the slide just to take up the extra slack. Not to glue it in, just to take up the slack and now it's nice and tight not going anywhere so I don't have to worry about that. The pair ordnance, it came with two magazines, one of which I glued just to kind of get this dark look, and the other, the other one, I left 
the shiny, and uh, I keep it loaded with my Winchester Rangers. And uh, I haven't had any problems with the springs. They're not wearing out on me because I keep this loaded all the time for that home defense. That's why I use the Rangers. And I keep it loaded with all eight rounds. By the way, it is an eight round magazine, which is a nice touch. And uh, the magazines, I don't really have any problems with the way that they feed. They feed really nice, they load really nice, and they eject really nice. I'll show you that here. Take my empty magazine, and it pops right out, no problems. The only thing is on one of my magazines, the little uh, nub that actually catches the slide lock wore off and I had to take a rat tail file, heat it up and press that back out to create a ball for it to catch on. So these magazines are not the best quality. That follower wore right out on me. So that was the only thing I really didn't like uh, magazine wise. Other than that, they're pretty good. The only other thing I didn't like about the pistol is that this uh, paracoat is what they call it. The finish on the gun is absolute garbage in my opinion. It's wearing off uh, everywhere. You know, I could almost take it off with a fingernail. You can see on my slide stop right in here, you can see where, where that's coming off. Right there, you can see shiny stainless underneath. That's really not too big of a deal because again, it is stainless so it's not going to corrode, but if you like a gun to look pristine uh, you and you get one of these, send it out to get it coated or buy something else because that coating comes right off. I imagine if this wasn't stainless, you know, it might be able to uh, adhere a little bit better if it was made of a little more porous steel or something where, you know, that'll let it sink in, maybe you wouldn't have that problem. But I know with the stainless, you're definitely having that problem. Overall, I think it's a great pistol. I mean, it functions reliably, but let's be honest, it's a 1911. What 1911 doesn't function reliably? All right, it's nice and smooth. It's nice and tight. Very, very accurate pistol. I was shooting groups, I mean, uh, at, at short ranges, the groups that I was shooting weren't groups, they were going through the same hole. I mean, this is a really accurate pistol. More so, I think, than a pistol really for almost anything needs to be. If you're looking for a WROL pistol, then yeah, that, ac that accuracy is gonna come into play. Other than that, this is way overkill when it comes to accuracy. If you're talking between seven and 20 feet, the accuracy on this is way more than you'll ever need. And if you're talking WROL, you can hit targets at 100, at 100 yard ranges with this, no problem. I can almost guarantee it. If you can shoot, you can hit those targets. It's accurate enough to do it. The gun fits really well in the hand. Again, it's a 1911, they all do. Um, my other, uh, other than the grip safety, my other favorite thing about this is actually stamped right here on that dust cover. And that's where it says Pineville, North Carolina. That means that this gun is $550, maybe up into $600 if you're you know, buying it somewhere that's not giving you a really great price. And it's made in North Carolina. It's made here in the, U in the U.S. As opposed to those rock islands and those high points, which are about the same price, they're made in the Philippines. In my opinion, you're not going to get the same workmanship on a gun made in the Philippines. If you don't buy that, then think about this. If you're any kind of patriot, which I am, this is an all-American thing. You know, this is an all-American firearm. It was designed by Browning, a great American. It was used by the United States Army for, what, 80 years? Uh, this is an American icon. You know, this constitutes everything that is America. It's just, you look at it and it smells like America. Um, so to have one of these made in the Philippines, to me, it's just, it's a blight, really, on 1911s and in our country. Um, you know, I, I, not that I have anything against the Philippines, but just to have one of these made in any other country, to me, I would never buy one that wasn't made here, personally. I mean, that's second type of cool. Maybe you don't have a problem with it, and I applaud you for that, you know. That is your prerogative. But for me, I want one made in the U.S. So, the uh, pair ordinance definitely comes highly recommended. It's got the will tell, seal of approval. Go ahead, pick one of these up. You won't regret it.